Welcome to the Global Alliance of NGOs for Road Safety's fourth webinar in a series of six called Let's Get Minimum Three Star Roads by 2020. In November 2015, the Global Alliance of NGOs for Road Safety launched a multi-year capacity building initiative called the Alliance Empowerment Program. The program aims to strengthening the capacities of Global Alliance member NGOs to design, plan, fund, deliver and evaluate effective programs. A learning needs assessment has served as the basic for the capacity building initiative and informed the webinars that you have signed up to. Many NGOs are unsure how they can contribute meaningfully to reducing fatalities on our roads and to the star rating concept and three star coalition specifically. We wish to ensure that NGOs are aware of how to advocate for star rating and which relevant actions they can take and what meaningful contributions they can make. To address this, the Alliance in collaboration with IRAP, Three Star Coalition and FIA Foundation had created a number of webinars. We hope that all NGOs, those experienced with road infrastructure and those without experience, will learn strategies to work in the area. You can use these webinars to learn more, you may use them to design your own activities, and you may use these webinars as a springboard to implement specific activities. The webinars are intended to inspire you and provide you with specific ideas on how you can get started, get moving, or fine-tune what you already do. We have designed the webinars based on your inputs, and we would like you to make them as useful as possible so you can ensure you get the information you need. If you have questions, uh, there's a link to a question and feedback form in the su subscription mail you received. You can also find the subscription form on our website. I'll just show you where. Under activities, you go to capacity building and under the empowerment program, you'll find the feedback form here. We have called the series, Let's Get Min Minimum Three Star Roads by 2020. This is the fourth webinar of six. Today, we will focus on how to gain media attention. You can see an overview of all the webinars here, and this is the fourth one. In this webinar, we have two presenters. FIA Foundation's US manager, Natalie Dressin, will spend the next 25 minutes talking about media and how to gain media attention. Following Natalie's presentation, Cara Smith from South Africans Against Drunk Driving will talk about her experience. Um, it, welcome to both of you. Let's get started. Natalie, how about you start? First, a bit of background. My name is Natalie Drazen, and as Lotte said, I'm the US manager of the FIA Foundation, which is a member of the Three Star Coalition. Our foundation is an innovative global road safety philanthropy, which aims to promote safe, clean, fair, and green mobility for all. Some of you may be familiar with us because we proposed the UN Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011 to 2020, and we are supporting programs, pilot initiatives, and campaigns in over 80 countries. We also launched the Save Kids Lives campaign last year, which had over 1 million signatures to the Child Declaration, demanding that children have a right to safe roads. A little more background. So what is the Three Star Coalition? Just to recap, it's a group of like-minded organizations working together to build a healthier world by advocating for the design and construction of safer roads in the developing world. Advocate, we advocate for roads in developing countries to be built to a minimum three star safety standard for all road users. And we urge organizations like the World Bank to adopt this standard. We know that moving to a three-star minimum standard will save lives, avert crippling injuries, and provide substantial economic returns. The only way that we can accomplish this is through your advocacy. The Coalition is offering a series of webinars, which we hope will build your capacity to serve as Coalition advocates and advocates for road safety in general. We know that you're particularly attuned to the problems in your community, more so than we could ever be, and that you want to do something about them. One area that comes up a lot in our discussions with you is school zones. It's a great way to improve road safety in school zones, and we can do this through the message of the coalition. Once you hone your skills to deliver the message and learn more about the star rating concept, you'll be able to meaningfully contribute to reducing fatalities on the roads. 
To do this, though, it's extremely important that you follow the webinar series in order so you can contribute to build, continue to build on your knowledge. These webinars will suggest a number of ways for you to take action and include follow-up questions and answers, toolkits, and a brainstorming session. So today we're going to build on previous webinars by focusing on the media. Here's an agenda. We know you have limited amounts of precious time and this agenda should help you review if you need to jump around. We'll provide an introduction to the coalition, talk about why media attention is so important, and provide tips for how NGOs with experience or without experience can get media attention. We'll also provide examples on how to write your own articles, which is a great way to make sure your message is relayed correctly. We'll end with a summary, questions and evaluations, and talk about other webinars that might interest you. So first, there's a crucial question we should ask, right? Why are we here? Why should we engage the media? We should say first that this webinar is attended for NGO, intended excuse me, for NGOs at all levels which are trying to engage with the media. We recognize that some NGOs may be very experienced with engaging with the media and only need suggestions about how to refine their skills. Other NGOs may have yet to reach out to the media and would like to learn how to do so. We hope to address the needs of NGOs at all skill levels and for this reason the first half of this webinar may be redundant for experienced NGOs. But regardless of your skill level, if there's something we haven't covered or if you have any questions, we do hope you'll let us know. We're here to help you. So again, let's think about why we should engage the media in the first place. The media is the best connection between you and any target audience, be it the public, policymakers, or other potential allies in the coalition. The media can help amplify even the smallest effort, putting your work on everyone's radars. But if the media isn't aware of your work and willing to disseminate it to the public, you risk not achieving one of the goals of the coalition, which is to spread the word. There's plenty of people and organizations out there that might want to get involved, they just don't know about the great work that you're doing. Policymakers might be reluctant to follow through with something that you're pushing for, but the simple act of shedding light on the issue through the media can lead them to act in your favor. That's why it's so powerful. One of the strengths of the Three Star Coalition lies in spreading your message, which is why it's so important to have the media engaged. So this webinar is geared at helping you achieve just that. Many of the tips here come from the World Health Organization's reporting guide on road safety. It's a guide for journalists, and it's available at this link below. The Global Alliance of NGOs for Road Safety is actually mentioned in the guide under the header Story Angle, Interest Groups and Advocacy Organizations Can Bring a New Perspective to Familiar Problems. This is evidence that the solution lies with you. Sometimes road safety is already covered in the media, which is great, but with your help and your efforts, we can bring even more attention to this worldwide epidemic. So let's start with how to get media attention. Trying to get the attention of the media might seem daunting at first, but it's relatively easy. Journalists are busy, but they want to talk to you. It's their job to make sure the public is aware of your efforts. Before you reach out to the media, though, there's a few things that you should do first. First of all, identify what you want to talk about. Do you have an upcoming event about the Three Star Coalition? Are you just trying to get media to report on your involvement in the coalition and the need for road safety? Either is fine, but make sure your ask is clear. Second, explore your connections. Do you have any family or friends who work in journalism, for example, print, broadcast, radio, or social media? Or do they know other people that do work in journalism? You have a much higher chance of finding a receptive journalist if there's a mutual connection between you. Always let the reporter know who referred you to them. Third, link the story to a specific event. Is there any timeliness to the story? Timeliness is about making a story particularly relevant at a specific time. For example, your efforts will be particularly timely if the World Bank has a road project in the pipeline for your country. If you contacted a reporter in early March and the World Bank is reviewing a country project in mid-March, your story is very timely and the reporter would probably feel more pressure to cover it quickly. Last, make sure you have a press release ready. You should always have this ready to use when contacting a reporter. Even if you've only had a verbal conversation and not an email exchange, it's necessary to have this ready to send quickly so that the reporter doesn't forget about you while they're still interested. If you're trying to get attention for an event, the release should include all details, who, what, where, and why, and stuff like time, location, and important speakers. The most important part of the press release is the hook, which is one gripping blurb at the top which will catch any reporter's attention. Often reporters only read the hook to figure out if they want to keep reading the press release. We will provide a press release template, but should you modify it, 
and you should know sorry you should modify it because you know best what's going to grab the attention of media in your country so once you've completed these steps it's time to get in touch with reporters if you know the email of the reporter that you're contacting send them a message introduce yourself introduce your organization and highlight some of your accomplishments very briefly attach your press release all of your contact information and let them know that you'll follow up with a phone call if you don't know the specific sorry if yes if you don't know the specific reporter you want to get in touch with but you do know the newspaper radio or broadcast company call them and ask if anyone covers traffic or roads um, and if no one covers that area ask who covers health road safety is a health issue get the reporters email and phone number and start by sending them an email if you don't know which which newspaper, radio, or broadcast company you want to get in touch with, that's perfectly fine. Call a bunch in your area and see who's responsive. Think about um, the reach of the paper. Is your story best for a local paper or one with a wider reach? If you do get an email answer, be as responsive as you can so they don't lose interest. If you haven't gotten an answer, send a follow-up email and then call the reporter. If they still don't answer, call the newspaper, radio, or broadcast company back let them know you haven't heard from the reporter and ask if there's anyone else you can speak with. Persistence is everything, but politeness is key. So it's always easier to understand this process with an example. Here's an NGO that successfully carried out these steps. So um, to give us some examples of how our members have gained media attention, we have invited Kara Smith from South Africans Against Drunk Driving to join us. Welcome, Kara. Carrie, could you give us an example of how you prepare when you reach out to media? How do you identify what you are what you're going to talk about? Certainly. Many years ago, SAD had great difficulty getting support from East Coast Radio in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. We'd contacted the editor on numerous occasions, as well as contacting numerous presenters with little success and certainly no responses. One presenter, Jane Lindley Thomas, would assist us occasionally by making comments and publicizing events as she was a personal friend of Chaz, my son who was killed by a drunk driver and who led to me starting SAD. But eventually we got a response and started to work with the radio station after a young father was killed by an unlicensed drink driver in Mplanga, the area of the radio station, and his two young daughters, Riley six and Michaela, 13, was severely injured and in hospital in, in Amshanga. The radio station was, was giving a lot of coverage and was getting people to offer emotional and financial support to the family. So SAD contacted the radio station for the family's details so we could come on board and we could contact the family, offer them emotional support and pamphlets, and we sent the children Mad's grief and injury workbooks. SAD then met with East Coast Radio and they ran a few drink driving ads on the, on the station and offered us support in the future. So then after that, in 2013, and this is where once again we're linking to the United Nations Decade of Action for Road Safety, they, in one crash three people were killed and when the case went to court and SAD was protesting with the victims, East Coast Radio was there to take the photos and report on the case and this pressure was instrumental in getting a jail conviction a very rare occasion in South Africa so here we, we didn't only reach out to the newspaper but also the radio stations and television so here again you have to keep a press release so that after the, the event like the protest march you can give the release to the newspapers and then they can um, publicize it. So you need very much an emotional hook in line to get the journalists or the educators of the public interested. So there we had the protest march for the three killed by the drink drivers. The urban protest march, enough is enough. And this launched the decade. So here what you have to do, sometimes you've got to be quite courageous. So after we we did the petition and we got the people at the protest march to sign the protest, enough is enough. And the, there was a launch of the decade of action at um, 
Pretoria, Sad just literally went up to the minister and handed over the petition without prior permission. So sometimes you do really have to be courageous and step out and, and hand this over. So how do you identify the media and how do you maintain a relationship with them, Carol? Basically what we do is we look at all the media outlets in South Africa. We made a list of them. We took down the email addresses. So that's newspapers, radios. And then we put them on a ma our, um, mail mailing list, either the MailChimp mailing list or otherwise um, a mailing list for emails. So if we had a press release, we could send it out to them. Or otherwise, um, if something very specific happened in an area or province, we could send it to the newspapers in the area. The other thing that's very, very important is Twitter. So SAD follow many newspapers, radio stations, TV shows, government institution, government officials. So for example, our Minister of Transport, we have a direct link to her. She follows us, we tweet to her. And they then follow you and they can check and report on what we are doing and what is happening. Or alternatively, we can tweet our opinion to them. We can, for example, if there's a newspaper report, we do a bitly shortened version of the story we're commenting on and that we then want the media to pick up on. So Twitter is exceptionally powerful. In February, in three weeks of February only, we reached over 15,800 people, and that's a lot of people for South Africa. In addition, we also put comments on our Facebook page, as well as posting them on our website. And then the, all the Twitter posts are linked to the website, so people can see our tweets, and then they can also follow us. So, Karen, I know you can stories, uh, stories. Keep, them on uh, file. keep them on file. It would be great if you could share exactly how you do that and how you use them. Certainly, what we do is we watch the media for news of deaths of people by drink drivers and occasionally um, victims' families are referred to us. What we then do is we contact the family, we send them our condolences, pamphlets, and we offer to help. But then after that, we keep all current press releases and we will offer to assist them in court cases, and we keep all their contact details in our files. So another way of getting media attention is writing your own story. Natalie, uh, could you give us some main points on this? Yes, of course. So um, let's see. So Carol, first of all, thank you so much for, for that great illustration of strong advocacy. Um, you know, there's one point that that I really want to drive home, and that's, you know, sometimes you might have to pay a media outlet to report on your work and publish it. And that can be really hard for NGOs without many resources, but a good alternative to this is to write your own story in the form of an op-ed. So that's for the opinions or the editorials section, um, or a letter to the editor, or as a guest writer. You should write your own story, you should send it to a local newspaper, and then you should call the newspaper to confirm that they've received your story if you don't hear back from them. Now, when you're writing your own story, you should try to shift from crash reporting to road safety reporting. Let's talk a little bit more about this. Crash reporting happens once a death or injury has happened, but road safety reporting happens before. It's what prevents the crash. Crash reporting is reactive, whereas safety reporting is proactive. You'll notice that we try not to use the word accident, by the way, because accidents are unpreventable. But we all know that road crashes are entirely preventable, which is why we call them crashes or incidents. Here's five tips to shift from crash reporting to road safety reporting from the WHO's Ideas for Stories at this link. Um, they're at the link that you saw before. Uh, for the Road Safety Reporting Guide. And they come from Supendu Ray, who is an editor for the Hindustan Times, who's published many in-depth feature stories on road safety. So first, a road crash is not just a random incident. You should really dig deep and ask why it happened. Second, you have to keep a record of your crash stories. You have to reuse these materials and make the links. 
Third, don't consider that a crash is just covered because you wrote about it when it happened, but keep pushing, keep following up on it just like Caro did, and keep writing about it until the reason for the crash have been fully investigated and you feel that you've prevented further crash, which crashes with your work. Fourth, just don't wait for a crash to happen. This is why you do road safety reporting instead of just crash reporting. And last, when you're writing a story, keep in mind that your readers are all road users, so relate what you're saying to them. Everyone understands the experience of walking down the street or getting in a car or almost having a near miss with another car. Make sure that you make the story relatable. So, Caro, I know that you have experience writing your own story, and we'd love to hear more about this. Certainly. So, for example, we had a newspaper who contacted us for a story on a victim of drink driving, and we used this story. Jake Whitten was an amazing young man. He was a lifesaver. He was the head boy of his school in Cape Town, and they asked to, for this to be covered. So, um, this happened in Christmas last year. We then contacted the family because we had the details on our file, and we told them about the request. And they were in, were in agreement, and we referred them to the newspaper who ran the story with this human element. And so the story, which is very moving, is that the son's chair is empty at the Christmas lunch. So this then makes the crime of drink driving so much more real for the public, and it hooks in to the story. Great, so as you can see, you know, something like Caro's organization, there's a lot of experience and it comes from a tragedy but it really helps build um, a positive movement for the future and there's a lot to be said for that. Now, other organizations might have a lot of experience as well, but as you can see, even though Caro has experience, she keeps going with it, she leverages it to get even more. So you should remember that it's not easy to keep doing this once you already have the attention of reporters, but you have to keep their interest and you have to make sure your story gets across correctly. So what you should first do is respond to the newspaper article to make sure you keep the ball rolling to get even more media attention. So here's a couple more tips modified from the WHO's reporting guide. First, make a fact sheet. Keep it with you when you're talking to reporters about your stories. Don't bore them with too many statistics, but use the ones you want them to take away about road deaths and injuries in your country and how the Three Star Coalition's efforts can help save lives. Second, make these statistics meaningful. Come prepared with statistics from your country and the world. Don't just say that we lose 500 children a day on our roads, but go one step further by illustrating that we lose the equivalent of 10 school buses of children daily. Link, this, link the statistics to other diseases. Roads are the main killer of males of working age, for example, ages 15 to 29, and that's even higher than the death toll from HIV and AIDS. Overall, roads also kill more people than TB or malaria. Third, don't assume that reporters know the issue, or that people know the issue. Road safety is not a sexy topic, and consequently, many reporters aren't familiar with that issue, let alone IRAP or the Three Star Coalition. Refer to the one-pager about the coalition and provide the reporter with background. Fourth, ask why. Explore why you don't have three-star roads in the first place. What's missing in your country? Is it the attention of policymakers? Is it financing? Give the reporter a sense of how to solve this problem and be as specific as possible. If there's people or ministries or other government entities involved, you want to be sure that the reporter includes that in the article. Fifth, avoid technical terms. Talking about vulnerable road users doesn't mean much to the general public, but if you talk about moms going to the market and cyclists and tuk-tuk drivers or people walking to school, then it starts to make a lot of sense. These are the people who suffer most from road traffic injuries and deaths. Sixth, think about the context. Explain that roads kill 1.2 million people per year and that road safety is part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals to which every UN country is bound. Goal 3.6 is to half the amount of deaths and injuries on the roads by 2020. The only way we're going to get there is by targeting the leading funder of roads, which is the World Bank, which funds $5 billion of roads each year. We could save countless lives if we had a minimum safety performance metric on these roads. If your country achieves this goal, it will be held up as a success story for the rest of the world, and guess who's getting credit for that? You are. Seventh, emphasize the need to make road safety a priority. Road safety is a public health issue. It requires the attention of the Ministry of Health, Transport, and Environment. 
Road injuries and deaths can cost a country up to 3 to 5 percent of GDP. And it's not just life-saving, but it's also a money-saving issue, and spending money on infrastructure really pays off. Remember that road crashes are the leading cause of death, and they place a heavy burden on already strained public health systems, and they affect quality of life. Last, find the human story. Many NGOs know victim advocates who are willing to talk about how road crashes affected their family. Many victims are also among the poorest and most vulnerable members of society, and the ripple effects can last for generations. Putting a face to a statistic can make this issue seem much more real, but it's important to be respectful of a grieving family when broaching the idea of advocating. And last, remember, if you don't know an answer to a question that a reporter asks you, that's perfectly fine. Just let them know that you'll answer them and get back to them. And above all, remember that road safety is newsworthy. Show them the passion, the energy, and the dedication behind what you do. So writing a story before a crash or road safety reporting isn't easy, but it can be done and it's important to help people think about prevention. The WHO's guide also provides some ideas for how to do this, including different focuses for a story such as road safety legislation, economic cost-benefit analysis of road safety, road safety as a political and development priority, and road safety as a public health issue. It suggests who you should talk to and what questions you should ask them. Here's a couple examples. So first, what's my story's focus, right? Well, safe roads and better transport infrastructure. Who should you talk to? Here's a list for you. And what should you ask? Here's another list. Basically, you just want to make sure that you've completely explored the topic and covered it appropriately. The Road Safety Guide contains examples of how to place road safety stories in a broader context, tips on how to cover the topic, and resources and tools to add depth to your stories. We know it might seem like a big step to write your own article, but it's a great way to draw attention to your efforts using the right wording, to see your name in the paper, and make your family and friends proud of you, of course. So here's a quick summary. In this webinar, we talked about how to approach the media if you have no experience, or even if you have a lot of it, and how to write your own road safety story. We've also talked about crash reporting versus safety reporting and how important it is to get the media's attention even when a crash doesn't occur. We want to stop them from happening. We don't expect you to remember all of this, so please go back and review. We do hope you'll let us know if you have any questions, because when you get the media to cover your work, we also hope you'll share those stories with us so we can help inspire the rest of the coalition to do the same. Just remember, practice makes perfect. So we hope this webinar was helpful, but we know that when it comes to the media in your country, you are the ones that have the answers. Whether you realize it or not, you engage with the media every single day, online, on the radio, on your phone, on your TV, and in print. The media is the perfect mechanism to make your voice heard and to help you save lives on the roads. So um, this, um, this has brought us to the end, and thank you very much to Cara and to Natalie for contributing to our webinar. You may have uh, questions to what you have heard today, and we would also like to get your feedback and evaluate the webinar. On our website and the, the, the link that you see here on the screen, you can find a feedback form and an evaluation form. Please fill it in and submit it, and if you have a question, please add it here to the form and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much for listening and have a safe day.